Hello friends, uh, uh, we have started a new series as you know, uh, modern drama and uh, modern drama for us is uh, the drama uh, in the 20th century, uh, a, a very important literary mode and uh, this is to be uh, studied uh, carefully uh, in, in the exploratory sense because it is still evolving and uh, it is activist, it is uh, ideological, uh, it, is, uh, it believes in change and uh, all other uh, good things that are associated with scientific thought and uh, then there is a mass participation, there is a participation of the audience uh, with, with the, you know whatever, whatever happens on the stage and in fact audience is an important uh, segment of the theatre activity uh, called drama in the broader sense. Uh, we have today uh, for this lecture uh, uh, Professor Payal Nagpal who teaches English in Janaki Devi Memorial College, Delhi University. Uh, she has done exclusive uh, work on drama and uh, she is a known scholar of this particular genre. Uh, we are happy to have her on this topic uh, to talk and uh, uh, to begin with uh, I would like to put a few general questions about what she is going to say. Uh, drama in the 20th century, that is broadly the concern that we have for discussion today and uh, what could be the specific features of the 20th century, uh, Professor Nagpal, uh, that would have compelled people to take to this form in such a way. Drama wasn't so uh, powerful uh, an aspect of a literary expression in the 19th century or in the 18th century. And in the 17th century too, it confined mainly to the uh, 1630s or 1640s after which dramatic and all other cultural activity came to a stop. But in the 20th century, drama came back with a vengeance. So what is there in the 20th century uh, that you know uh, makes people uh, react dramatically as we, as, as we talk about it in the theoretical sense and uh, the associated aspects, uh, I'd be just uh, uh, stopping you here and, here and there to, to explain to us the uh, complexities, the intricacies of uh, this particular form that has emerged in a big way in the 20th century. So please uh, tell us about this. Uh, thank you for your question, Professor Prakash. Uh, I think uh, what is very, very uh, significant in the 20th century is the element of modernity. And this aspect of modernity which uh, touches the lives of people in a significant way, uh, you know, which is actually uh, rendered creatively through the genre of, the, uh, of drama, uh, you know, by, by playwrights, uh, by people who are involved in uh, stage design, set design. Uh, you very rightly pointed out audience. In fact, if we look at three key moments uh, and in fact three key movements, I should say, related to drama in the 20th century, the first half that is. So we are looking at naturalism, we are looking at uh, theatre that is very, very sharp, activist theatre, as you said, political theatre. And uh, the third is, uh, you know, theatre of the absurd, as it's, uh, you know, uh, well known by the time we reach the, uh, you know, post-Second World War period. But to begin with, uh, you again rightly pointed out that we don't have any, uh, you know, very uh, concrete uh, uh, activity in terms of drama in the 19th century or even before that. And what is it that happens? Uh, in uh, towards the end of the 19th century that really gives that impetus uh, to playwrights to really talk about uh, things that affect people in their day-to-day -day lives, the social problems, the economic issues, all these are considered, uh, you know, fit subject, apt subject for a representation in drama. This is the element of modernity. There is There are a lot of changes actually that are taking place. If you look at it, very carefully throughout the 19th century uh, as far as uh, the genre of drama is concerned uh, plays are being put up more for enjoyment you know with very very stock stereotypical uh, uh, plots it's only towards the end of the 19th century with the intervention of playwrights like uh, Ibsen from Norway or we have uh, Gerhard Hauptmann from uh, Germany these are the playwrights that actually try to bring about a change because they feel that these stock uh, plots and uh, you know plays that everybody is watching uh, really for enjoyment have actually no connection with the real lives of people. So what I think uh, the genre of uh, the novel uh, does 
really speaking at the beginning of the 19th century uh, through the work of uh, writers like uh, Balzac and Flaubert is something that happens in drama only towards the end of the 19th century. Uh, you know, uh, <coughs> this word um, modernism or modernity is an oft repeated term and uh, this has been uh, 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 long back also in use. Uh, for instance, Shakespeare is a modern uh, mind, a modern playwright, Chaucer is a modern voice and modernity uh, goes back to the Renaissance period. So, what is specifically modern in the, 20, in the 20th century that one has to use this word here uh, in, in a particular way? Uh, so, to substantiate this, I will just uh, you know uh, read out a quotation here, uh, very very uh, you know it is an oft quoted statement uh, by uh, the French writer uh, Emil Zola. So, uh, he says, our theatre desperately needs uh, a new man who will skirt the debased boards and bring about a rebirth in an art degraded by its practitioners to the simple-minded requirements of the crowd. Uh, he says, yes, it would take a powerful personality and innovator's mind to overthrow the accepted conventions and finally install the real human drama in place of the ridiculous untruths that are on display today. So, what we really speaking take from Zola who is uh, you know, really speaking, propounded the whole idea of naturalism which uh, you know, hinges on uh, you know, the idea of uh, you know, uh, uh, you know, the, the individual really speaking placed in a very specific environment and to look at it uh, through the lens of uh, science and rationality is what Zola gives us and says that simply catering to the requirements of the crowd is not what is required but what is required is this idea of the real human drama. Now, why do we really speaking need the real human drama? If you look at the 19th century, there is there are so many, uh, uh, you know, uh, revolutions that take place throughout the 19th century, especially in the context of France. We have some very, very important, um, uh, you know, moments in the 19th century. Uh, Darwin's original species, for instance, which gives us the whole idea of evolution, uh, you know, in humankind. We have Marx and Engels who uh, you look at the society in terms of uh, you know class divisions and uh, all these things and as we head towards the end of the 19th century it is this change in the whole idea the perspective itself is undergoing change and uh, the middle class has remained largely complacent in the context of uh, drama throughout the 19th century but it is at the end of the 19th century with the uh, creative work that is done uh, by the playwrights that there is a need to think about modernity in the in the sense of the 19th century and not in the sense of the renaissance for instance where the idea of the individual uh, you know uh, 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 humankind is significant but the modernity of uh, the late 19th century and the first half of the 20th century is very different first of all it is rational it has a scientific approach uh, it is also something that is very, very experimental, which is why within a span of 50 years, we have many different ways of looking at drama, of uh, writing plays themselves that are of a very different kind, really speaking. And uh, if we really uh, you know, look at this element of modernity, it is also something that you know, it is after industrialization has really speaking taken place. So, uh, you know, with the advent of the machine, with the idea of production, these are all, uh, you know, uh, things that are specific to the 19th century. So, the modernity that we see that emanates, uh, you know, in the novel as pointed out at the beginning of the 19th century and, uh, you know, enters the domain of uh, drama, theatre towards the end of the 19th century is something that is a product of all these changes that take place in the 19th century. Uh, what I particularly find interesting uh, in your observation is that uh, in the 19th century onwards, there is a kind of rise of the middle class, which wasn't the case during the Renaissance period. Then it was a different kind of antagonism in society. But in the 19th century, uh, there is a whole section of the middle class uh, which takes to uh, writing, expressing uh, in literature uh, in such a manner that one is aware, one is self-conscious, one is playing a role and all those things. And that uh, the kind of scientific thought that is referred to, this is something that is hard earned by the, the middle class through intellectual effort. And uh, that is how, you know, drama of the 20th century uh, would bring in all these elements 
and uh, through these elements will connect with the modern audience. Am, am I right in explaining your point of view? Uh, yes, absolutely. Because it is only with this idea of the machine, with you know this shift from uh, the countryside to uh, what is being constituted as the city. Because in the 19th century, this is the early 19th century, uh, the city is in the making. And with it come a lot of new ideas, with it comes a new class of people. So uh, it's all these changes, which is why, you know, towards, uh, if you look at it, uh, you know, in the shift from the late 18th to the 19th century, observation, the real world, uh, to look at things as they are, are all very, very seminal ideas. In fact, uh, it, it's not something that, you know, is totally missed out by drama, but it doesn't really pick up, you know, you know in the uh, first couple of decades. So, for instance, in 1827, we have Victor Hugo's uh, The Preface to Cromwell, in which he says that the only laws should be those of nature. And this idea of representing things as they are uh, is, is put forth. However, it's not, we don't see it happening in drama. Uh, drama is, it's not as if plays are not being written. It is not as if plays are not being performed. So, initially, for the first couple of decades, plays are written uh, you know, mostly to be read, uh, you know, uh, right throughout the time we have the uh, romantic poets and so on. Uh, plays are written mostly to be read. Uh, but as uh, plays are also being performed, we have the tradition of the well-made play and so on. Uh, it's primarily to give some kind of uh, enjoyment to the crowds that come. Any serious engagement with the real social issues of the day is not something that is happening in the domain of That is theater. the vocabulary that I like, real social issues. And uh, the earlier phrase that you used was the middle class. So if there is a middle class, then there must be lower classes. There must also be upper classes. The middle class might be looking towards the upper class, but is also aware of the realities of the lower classes. And that this class element uh, in, in, in literature and, and in society will definitely uh, give a sound footing to the dramatic activity. Would you agree with that? Yes. In fact, I think because these ideas also, you know, concretize right through the 1830s and 40s and so on, and um, uh, theatre and performance by itself involves uh, the audience. But this is not something that is being represented within, you know, the auditorium where the plays are being performed. And the audience is, uh, you know, uh, more or less there to be in that happy state. So. Uh, once I think a lot of these ideas have concretized, really speaking, and uh, of course uh, Zola's statement really gives uh, that kind of push to bring in naturalism, to see things as they are, something that Hugo says uh, at the beginning of the 19th century is, uh, you know, an idea that finds concrete form towards the end of the 19th century in uh, Zola's idea of naturalism. And we have naturalistic theatre for this reason at the end of the 19th century. Uh, also, uh, in the context of uh, the analysis that you have given, uh, there is an, a different kind of an element of humanism in, in, in modern writing. And uh, that humanism, you know, appeals to the larger masses at the lower level particularly and assign uh, their role to them. And uh, then, you know, these masses who were other earlier uh, unself-conscious become self-conscious. The second thing that uh, occurs to me um, after listening to what you have said is that the writer is aware about his or her surroundings and is now playing a role which the writer may not be doing unto himself in the earlier stages of history. Would you would you uh, so, comment on this? Yes, so where uh, if we look at it, you know, concretely in the kind of work that is done in the 18th and the 19th centuries, so from, you know, the, the tragedies uh, that were there in the 18th century, we moved to the idea of a romantic drama in the 19th century and romantic intrigue. But these are, uh, really speaking, uh, ideas that do not reflect those real social issues. And the kind of humanism that we are talking about is not represented here. Because uh, in that sense, uh, you know, uh, the sense that one gets is that this kind of serious, uh, deep thought has not been given to those issues. And those issues are probably being uh, sidelined and ignored, uh, maybe taken up in uh, you know, other genres, but drama certainly does not take it up. 
which is why the kind of humanism that we are talking about that we see uh, you know uh, pretty much there uh, in the later works of uh, Ibsen for instance in his uh, right through the realist cycle uh, of his uh, work uh, is is missing throughout uh, you know the 19th century we don't see it in drama and it's actually a very very interesting uh, phenomena because uh, looking at uh, looking at literary history we see how uh, you know uh, the the genre of uh, novel of poetry uh, both have really speaking moved way ahead but uh, drama seems to you know really speaking uh, stagnate through these uh, decades uh, you have also used the word experiment uh, in your initial statement and uh, drama seems to be according to you the essence of uh, you know uh, uh, experiment experiment means uh, exploration experiment means uh, uh, playing with things so that you can understand them better experimenting uh, in view of uh, how the uh, the audience has emerged in the last 20 or 30 years of a playwright's life so experiment you think is the key of the of the, of the modern drama uh, experiment is not only at the level of issues not only at the level of content but very serious experimentation is happening at the level of form mm. the idea of uh, an aesthetic in drama is something that emerges with this kind of very <coughs> serious engagement and so uh, yes uh, you know which is why you know if you look at these three key moments i'm uh, you know not even going into uh, other areas like expressionism and social expressionism but i'm just looking at three broad areas even in these three broad areas of naturalistic drama of political theater of uh, uh, you know absurd theater uh, we we look at all these uh, ideas uh, being expressed not only at the level of content but at the level of form also the way in which naturalism understands its audience is very different from the way in which audiences understood in the context of epic theater and is vastly different from the way audiences understood in the context of absurd theater so uh, first and foremost in this experimentation the audience is a very very uh, serious part of uh, theater not just uh, viewers who are present but you know the entire aesthetic really speaking of drama is geared towards involving the audience in some way uh, this way may not always be an active way but it is seriously involved in uh, you know kind of considering the audience uh, you know as seriously engaged with what is being shown on uh, stage in a very subtle way you have uh, shifted uh, you know emphasis from drama to theater so uh, what is the relationship between drama and theater uh, uh, how theater you know adds a new dimension to to drama or how does drama control the theatrical activity uh, these are issues that have emerged in the last 50 years more than they, they were earlier so uh, how how would you uh, define how would you uh, clarify for the benefit of the students for the benefit of young scholars the the idea of theater in in, in dramatic activity so if we uh, really speak in it's a very important uh, point that you have raised uh, about the difference between drama and theater and as you rightly pointed out that in the last 50 years this has become a very um, important way of um, uh, you know approaching uh, drama studies and of looking at theater in a very very uh, you know serious way whether it's through research whether it's through writing uh, or performance itself so when we look at drama we are there is a play that is meant to be read there is a play that is meant to be performed but first and foremost the play is written and there is a ready script and so on now the dramatic element would be there in both cases but the moment this drama is presented to an audience the moment it is it has an aesthetic of a certain sort we have already shifted and moved into the realm of theater where we are looking at not just drama in its written form not just the dramatic aspects of the play uh, not only uh, of what we see on stage but the way in which it extends to uh, its audience the way in which it extends to society and the way in which its aesthetic itself is conceptualized i think that is a very important distinction really speaking that we can make between drama and theater where theater becomes in a sense the more performative the more dynamic aspect 
which means in theater uh, there is a third dimension, the dimension of uh, the uh, actor uh, uh, which is different for, from or at least uh, parallel to uh, the characterization. Now characterization is not important in the modern theater, more modern drama, but characters themselves become actors and actors talk directly to the audience. So this kind of a thing is uh, quite important. and. Uh, uh, so, viewers, uh, 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 Professor Payal Nagpal has uh, dwelt upon the specific aspects of drama and uh, clarified for our understanding the, the difference between uh, the modern drama of the earlier period, the, the, the 20th century, and she has gone over uh, the background that compelled, you know, drama to assume uh, a specific form in the 20th century. Thank you.